the evolution of stars. Let's now talk about the timeline. Star starts as a proto uh, cloud, or sometimes called a proto star. That's uh, you can see the timeline here. It collapses on itself. Eventually, it heats up due to the gravitational contraction, becomes a star, lives on the main sequence. That's that yellow dot. Eventually, turns into a uh, red giant. Eventually, it diffuses, kind of turns into a nebula. Uh, eventually, becomes a white dwarf and then a brown dwarf. Let's go through that process in some detail now. So I'm kind of moving a little bit faster. We need to understand two terms. We need to understand luminosity and the concept of spectra and temperature. The luminosity of a star is the total energy a star emits per unit of time. So you can think of it as a power. Um, the luminosity is a property of the star itself. It doesn't depend on how far it is away from the Earth. It doesn't depend on if there's clouds in between, whatever. However, we have to measure the star from Earth. That term is called the apparent brightness. Uh, and of course, a star is a point source, so its intensity falls off as 1 over d squared. Therefore, the brightness is equal to luminosity divided by 4 pi d squared, where d is the distance. Ultimately, we want to measure luminosity. That's one of the characteristics of a star. And uh, very hard to do, but trust me, it can be done. The other thing we need to talk about is the temperature of a star, because when we're characterizing stars, we're looking at the surface temperature. The sun is a typical star, and this is actually a plot of, of its uh, black body spectrum. Its actual spectrum is very close to this. Our eyes see the sun as yellow. You actually notice that most of the energy is really coming at a little bit higher range, but our eyes are tuned to see yellow greenish, so we kind of see the sun as a maximum yellow green thing, but it's really a little bit bluish if you think about what this curve is saying. Um, a hotter star would peak uh, closer to the origin of this curve at maybe, for example, 400 nanometers and 300 nanometers, whereas a cooler star, such as a redder star, would be pushed out to longer wavelengths and a broader spectrum. That's a key concept. What we want to look at is luminosity and temperature across stars. That tells us a lot about stars. Now let's talk about our friend, the Sun. For the purposes of our discussion, let's it's often scientists often like to normalize, and what we want to do is normalize relative uh, comparing other stars to the sun. So in terms of the luminosity, the sun luminosity is one. It's one solar luminosity. So a star that's 50 times as luminous as the sun would have a luminosity of 50 solar luminosities, for example. And the surface temperature of the sun, as we just discussed, um, looks like a black body of about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. And to our eyes, that's sort of like a yellowish, greenish kind of kind of star, more yellowish, right? I don't hear many people calling it green. Now what we want to talk about is how do we compare this to other stars? And astronomers have been measuring stars, and it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of perspiration. We, we can appreciate how, it's hard to appreciate how much work goes into making good measurements, but indeed, the luminosity and stellar temperature can be determined. And what happens is if we make a plot of this, and this is called Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or you'll see the, time, the term HR diagram. Uh, if we plot luminosity uh, as the y-axis and the temperature, where the higher temperature is sort of towards the origin here, such as portrayed in this graph, we kind of see an interesting pattern. Uh, you would expect if it was completely random, the star should uniformly clutter up this, this plot sort of in a random pattern, but it doesn't. There's a line that's called the main sequence line. Most stars are on that. Most stars are on the main sequence because that's where they spend most of their life. However, uh, and, and there's a range of stars from very hot stars to cooler stars on that main sequence line. If we look at the lifetime of a star on the main sequence versus its temperature, as we said before, a very hot star 
would have a very, very short lifetime. And in fact, some hot stars like 10 solar masses only have a lifetime of on the order of 10 million years. The sun is there. If you look at that little yellow dot, it's got a lifetime of about 10 to the 10th years. In other words, about 10 billion years. Uh, a reddish star, maybe about half of the solar mass, 0.3 solar masses, will live to be 100 billion, 100 billion years on the main sequence. We know why, because of the hydrogen fusion rate goes up exponentially with mass. Now, I know I've hit you with a lot of stuff, let's just talk about the formation of the star of the first part. We have a cloud, and what would it look like uh, on these, this um, HR diagram? The protocloud starts to form, it starts to get hot. So as it gets hotter, this protostar would appear, its temperature would get higher. And it turns out that it, for a while its luminosity turns out to be about the same, so it stays level. So the protostar is kind of moving in, getting hotter and hotter, getting brighter and brighter, and of course that big ball of gas is contracting. Here's a little simulation I came up with just to give you a, a flavor. It's not meant to be completely scientifically accurate. It's far from it, but it gives you the sense of out of darkness comes light. Out of this ball of gas starts to, from the gravitational heating, light begins. A star is being formed. It's contracting in size. As it's contracting, that core is getting hotter and hotter. The density is getting higher and higher. Nuclear fusion is about to start. The star is still contracting now rapidly. It's rapidly getting hotter, rapidly getting um, more surface temperature is increasing. Now, of course, rapidly means millions uh, on the order of maybe 500,000 to millions of years. It, relatively speaking, is a fast process compared to the time the star spends on the main sequence. Finally, the star is there. It's entered the main sequence. It's glowing hotly. It's in a stable configuration. And that star will continue to remain on the main sequence for billions of years to come. What I want to do now is we're going to talk about um, in the next video where we'll discuss the main sequence and what happens after that, which it really gets kind of exciting. Stars begin to rapidly expand and blow up. See you soon. Bye-bye.